Trinidad and Tobago is the land of Calypso. Now, gentlemen, we are proud and glad to have the English team down to Trinidad. We are always pleased to have a good team like them in the West Indies. So let me put you right in the clip. It's England who taught us to play cricket. So the boys are always glad to have our teachers with us down to Trinidad. The Trinidad test was the most remarkable match I've ever seen, and right from the outset, England appeared to be doing their best to throw it away. Strength of character and the ability to respond under pressure are essential qualities of a successful test cricketer, and the young captain was making mental notes. He's bowled him like some. Yeah, it's a finding out time, both for me in terms of captaining and in terms of finding out about the other players, because you often pick players, and if they're not in your county side, you know how they play because you've seen them in games but you don't know very much about them sometimes and you're really taking a bit of punt on, on their character and their bottle that kind of thing and it's only really when you play with them on a tour such as this that you really find out about them a number of atherton's young lions were now beginning to suggest that they possess the fighting qualities their captain was looking for graham thorpe's technique had been strongly criticized in jamaica and he had failed twice in guyana prompting calls for him to be dropped but now his gritty, determined innings of 86 made in four hours, gave England a valuable lead of 76. Like Mark Rambrakash, Ian Salisbury had spent much of the trip sitting on the sidelines, but Mike Atherton always believed that sometime on the tour, Salisbury would make a vital contribution. In Trinidad, he did just that through one moment of inspiration in the field. That's brilliantly taken. Superb catch. And then, with an outrageous stroke of luck, he took the wicket, which surely meant that England would win the match. A full top. Oh, it's unbelievable! He's been caught off Robin Smith. Adams crashed the full toss into Smith at short leg. It was a complete fluke. Robin Smith sustained nothing more than a nasty bruise, and England's cricketers were able to bask in glory, confident that they would keep the Test Series alive. Credit for that must go to Andy Caddick. Hi, Mum. Injuries and then a loss of confidence had wrecked the start of his tour, but he took six wickets in a test for the first time. Oh, yes. Andrew Carrick, a brilliant return catch. And Richie Richardson is gone. That's it. Taken by Russell behind the stumps. Ambrose out with the West Indies 171 runs ahead, but this moment, earlier in the morning, will haunt Graham Hick for the rest of his days. Chanderpol had only five and went on to make 50, every run making England's task more difficult. It was very frustrating. Um, everybody was aware that that was a crucial opportunity missed. And it's frustrating because really, you know, he's one of the finest slip fielders around who muffed a fairly simple chance. And, you know, there's nothing, not a hell of a lot you can do about it. Um, and so, yeah, you're frustrated. The mood within the camp had been one of quiet optimism. England needed 194 runs to win the match and stay in the series. No one was prepared for what was to follow. Padding up with an hour to go, it was obvious the West Indies were going to come steaming in for that hour, and I was just trying to tell everybody to be positive. Thank you for making me well. No. They had us down, but uh, we were out and, you know, we, we got up and we, we threw a big punch. Oh, that's very close first ball. I think it was a pretty good slip actually to get first up, obviously fairly out. Um, it's just one of those things, I don't think I played it especially badly because I'm lucky. First runs for England. Trouble here, trouble. This is absolute disaster for England. Kirtley's a, a much better bowler when he's either going to bat to the wall or whether he's when he senses a kind of breakthrough. He obviously sniffed an opportunity there. That gave him a lift and the other players around him. Uh, obviously, it has a psychologically down effect on, on the England dressing room. But, you know, you hope that players are strong enough for technique and temperament to come through that. And on that occasion, we won. Curly Ambrose knows it's out. 
with the, 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 the present English players. And for quite some time, they put their front foot away down, and then they can't get it back. You know, so I would think that they'll have to look at their technique. They'll, the coaches will have to start looking at the players and try and start teaching them line and length and to move initiatively, particularly to the rail quicks, back. When the wickets were tumbling, it must have been chaos. Um, I don't know, I'm sat in the shower just here in the rows. <laughs> we went to Taunton chasing 70 and were 15 for seven. So cricket throws up these anomalies, but usually test cricket you find an international side is strong enough uh, to come through these things, but we weren't last night. That's in the air, Benjamin down there for it. The match is over, the West Indies have won. Last night. An hour and a half was one of the most dramatic and exciting parts of a test match that I've ever seen. After a disastrous year, English cricket had hit rock bottom. They'd avoided equaling their lowest ever score in test cricket by just a single run. A blackwash was now a serious possibility. Last test match cricket, it tends to throw up, you know, um, shifts in the balance of power during the five days. That's what makes test cricket such a great game. And for three days, we controlled the match uh, and got blown away in an hour on the fourth. Well, what has happened with England is that they'll come up against a New Zealand team, particularly in the one that which Richard Headley is not in now, and they'll be able to get back on that front foot, stick the front foot down there, play around it, make runs, and they'll go ahead thinking that everything is all right. But it's not, because... Again, when they come against the rail quicks, they're going, to be, they're going to be caught out again. As far as the whole structure of the game, yes, I do think radical will be thinking is required. Uh, somewhere, England lose their way between the ages of about 9 and 24, when young players don't mature as quickly as the Chandler Pauls of this world. Uh, there was a young England player called Matthew Diamond who got a double hundred in the under-19 series, just as Chandler Paul did. He'll probably spend the summer playing for Nottinghamshire second eleven. That's not good enough. There's a lot of poor county cricket. There's a lot of soft cricket played in England. You know, it is a social game. And unfortunately, I don't mean a social game so much at, at county level, but it is a very much a social game as far as village cricket, club cricket, and it tends to go spread through a little bit into county cricket. Now, our cricket isn't as tough as what the cricket over here is, or in Australia or South Africa. Mike Atherton's tour, which he had looked forward to with so much optimism just two months ago, now lay in tatters. The harsh reality of his new position must have hit him hard. Even his private life was splashed across the front pages. Very difficult to accept. I think you do accept that it's happened to other people, therefore it's likely to happen to you. Um, but certainly as a single bloke who's not married, I didn't think it had a hell of a lot to do with the Sunday papers. Um, but, you know, you, you, if you let these things get on top of you, um, it's time to pack it in. <laughs>